Hey, I'm Eugene and I build and rank websites. Okay, so I wasn't, I mean, I mentioned it a couple of times that I was going to share my screen, but I wasn't going to do it. But if we're, if we're here, we may as well. I've had a couple of drinks, so I'm just going to minimize my big head. How slow do you want to go? Uh, we're going to zoom in on... No, we're going to zoom in on this one. So this is what essentially I was chatting about uh, just before. Um, why doesn't my website show up? I actually wanted to um, actually show you how you can check for some of these basic things yourself. Uh, one sec. Notice the color change. I, I ran out of uh, Prosecco. We had to, no, well, Prosecco, Aperol. Anyway, there's another one. It's just more red. So what term do we want to show up for? Let's pick a term. Let's maybe pick dentists. Um, let's look at some keywords. And so a, a way that you can find keywords, if you go to, there's a couple of actually free tools like Google Ads. Uh, let me just log in very uh, quickly. Uh, you can just have a quick squiz at what I was chatting to before. I might just quickly open up a, just a random Google Ads campaign. So Google Ads allows you to get, it has something called a Google Keyword Planner. And it just, it will tell you how many times a certain month a certain keyword gets entered into Google. So I'm just logging in now. I probably should have had this prepared, but I don't. I'm sorry. It's just the way I am. So we got... I'm just going to zoom in real quick. So we've got, this is called Google Keyword Planner. So in the top right, you're going to have Keyword Planner. If you just Google it, how to get access to it, uh, it's, it's free. So we're going to type in Dentist, uh, Dentist Melbourne. So whatever, whatever your business is, you should have a, a term that you want to rank for. In other words, if you were looking for your services, what would that term be? Just type that into Google. And so Dentist Melbourne, now this is why I'm not a big fan of, it. look, it'll give you average keywords. It's just telling us from 1,000 to 10,000 search volumes, which is pretty, like, like it could be 5,000, it could be 6,000. So that's where I, um, I use SEMrush. Obviously SEMrush is a paid software, but also I've heard good things about uh, keywords everywhere. It's an extension. So check out this extension, Keywords Everywhere Keyword Tool. You install it and it essentially gives you uh, keywords as you're searching. So it'll tell you how much this costs to turn on an ad and it tells you how many, how many times a certain keyword gets entered. Anyhow, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So uh, Dentist Melbourne gets 3,600 visitors per month. Um, now, at an average cost of minimum $4 a click or $16 a click maximum. Why is there such a big jump? We're talking about Google Ads here. We're jumping from keyword search volumes to now paying per click. If you've got a really, really good landing page and you're paying for the term Dentist Melbourne and that visitor lands on that page and spends time on that page and then inquires. Google see this, Google track this. That means you delivered, that means Google delivered a good experience to that visitor. So they might charge you $4. If you run an ad and you say, Google, anyone that types in Dentist Melbourne, we're gonna pay for them. They visit your website and they're just they're struggling to find what they need. They don't book, they bounce out. Maybe your website is slow. That's a bad experience. Chances are your Google won't continue showing your ad at all, or it's gonna charge you $16. So depending on the quality of your page, if you're running Google ads, if you've got a terrible landing page and they're having a bad time and Google tracks this kind of stuff, load time, bounce rate, how long they hang around on that page for you're gonna pay less if they have a good experience and you're gonna pay more if they have a bad experience. If they back out and click on somebody else and then book with somebody else, that's one of the signals. Another way to look at it is, if we're gonna pay for the word cat, they click on it and we show them dogs, 
well, that's where A, your, your ad probably won't get continued to be showed or you'll pay more. So the better quality ad that you create, you'll pay less, Google will like you more and send you more customers. So that's how Google Ads works. Anyway, I'm, I'm just looking at keyword volumes, dentist Melbourne, or for example, wedding venue, right? So wedding venue probably gets, you know, from 10,000 to 100,000. If I type it into SEMrush wedding venue, so this maxes out at 10,000. So if it's if it's 9.9, .9, it actually means there's more. Um, and so we, 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 we have a look at the wedding venues, Melbourne, 4,400. So, so that the free Google keyword planner tool said from 10,000 to 100,000 for wedding venue, for wedding venue, Melbourne. So what are we doing? We're kicking off the beginning. You know, what term do you wanna search for? How popular are those terms? Um, I, I mentioned keyword everywhere tool. I'm using SEMrush. There's also a cool tool called Google Trends. Now that just depends on what niche you're in. Uh, Google Trends. So if you're looking to see how popular your term is in terms of a trend, uh, a good example is working from home. Obviously that went crazy in the last 12 months. So we're gonna go worldwide. We're gonna go the last, uh, let's say five years. And obviously we're gonna see a big spike when COVID hit, working from home. So people typing in, you know, best equipment working from home. So that term went up. Or for example, eyebrow tattoo. That's one of my niches. I have a lot of sites there. So not much going on, but if we go from 2004 to present, then there was a trend, it goes up. Or another one is bone broth. So Google Trends is good to, to learn trends. So I'm in the bone broth space as well. I've got a couple of websites ranking in the space. So in 2014, I noticed that there was an influx of keywords. Or for example, was it solar tiles? You know, Elon Musk was talking about, you know, solar roof. Anyway, I'm just making stuff up. But I would imagine normal keywords like dentist, can't spell when people are watching a dentist. Melbourne, I mean, that's worldwide. That's not gonna make any sense. So we're gonna choose Australia. So it, it just it just shows you where the industry might be headed. I mean, that's a you know, bad way to probably explain it. Anyway, everyone's gonna need a dentist. People have teeth, right? It's a bad example. But you might look at uh, like Segways. Is that what that thing was called? A Segway scooter. Was it a Segway? There was a, this like doesn't even exist. Is that what it was called? You get my drift. There we go. So like it was very popular in 2015 and then it just dropped off because it was just fat. I've never written one, but this is a good way to just see a trend. It's very strong, very strong. So I use SEMrush. There's keywords everywhere, which is pretty cheap. Google Trends is free. Google, Google Keyword Planner is free i'm starting to slow my words how many competitors are there well i mean look up any directory look up yellow pages how many pages of wedding photographers are there that's just the general thing uh, where do you want to show up so for example if i type in dentist brighton obviously i'm targeting brighton that's the suburb i definitely want to show up on maps what you're looking at here is the three pack of maps. I'm, I'm, I'm quite good at popping up there. Uh, and then you also want to show up in the organic. So down here is the is the organic. So just, just to determine where you want to show up or, or if you want to go dentist, maybe emergency or we'll go injury lawyer. So you're going to have, generally you should have ads, but because I've been clicking on whole bunch of stuff, my browser is a bit thrown off, but generally you have ads at the top, then you have your maps, and then you have your, your listings. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to scroll too much. So if we keep going, how big, strong is their brand or website? So let's maybe go to, um, we've got the term Dentist Brighton. We'll click on the top. And what we're looking for, 
this, uh, this doesn't look, aha, uh -huh, it's loaded. Looks better than it did before. Not secure, straight away. Top left, it's saying not secure, not good. Means big mistake they're making. Let's have a look how big this website is. So if you do site semicolon, I think it's semicolon, I may have made that up. So if you type in site semicolon, I'm just gonna roll with it in case it is. And then you 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 put their domain in, it's gonna show, ha, huh, this site has 46 pages. Let's actually have a look at some of those pages. I like to go to the, the, the fifth page at the end because then you get the scraps. And just click on say, Veneer Cosmetic Aesthetics about Brighton Dentist Musical Instruments Teeth. Hold on, let me just, let me just. What is, what is going on there? Musical Instrument Teeth. So these are the sort of pages that they have on their site. This looks very beatable. Like, Dental Health for Musicians. I'm just, that's a niche, dental health for music musicians. If I've ever seen a niche, that's a niche. What if I click wind instruments? Do they have dental health for wind instruments? Is that a thing? Or oh, this link's not working. Anyway, this is a really, really good sign because this is not a very good website and it's ranking at the, at the top. This is like, to me anyway, I mean, this page is very thin. This, this is not good. Google doesn't like these pages. These pages are very thin. So these are, these are pages that I found in the background of their site. But if we just visit their website just really, really quickly, good looking landing page ish. It looks like it's built probably a couple of years ago. Now from Google's perspective, once again, I'm not auditing websites, but it's, uh, it's got an SEO title tag. It's got the meta description. It's got the H1. Brighton Dental Group, Brighton Dentists, Veneers Orthodontists. Yep, so that's why they rank. They've got the titles down packed. So, so that's if that's number one, we can really take that spot. Um, I, I, look, I wouldn't say quickly. Th these guys have probably been around for a couple of years, but if a non-secure site is ranking number one, that's telling you something. Um, let's, go, let's have a look at the second guy. Now, he might be second because he's only been doing this for a couple of months or, or, or less time than the other guy. But this website looks a lot better. So if I'm to just predict anything, let's have a look at their blog. I'm not applying any of my SEO tools to this website. I'm just having a quick squeeze. They've got a blog. Let's. When was this posted? When was this posted? I see that's an image. So can I just, aha, so it's a blog not long enough i'd like to see a blog longer they got a video on the page so it increases time on site uh actually there's a little bit of text here so it's not bad no date but anyway a lot of blogs so let's go back and see how big this page is it is secure i wouldn't be surprised if these guys overtake the others these guys have 600 pages the other ones have 40. So the other ones are doing something or Google has chosen them. Could be an outlier. So I wanna to try to stay on topic. How big, strong is their brand website? Um, let's let's have a quick squiz at their traffic. Uh, let's have a quick, so I use a, a different software called Ahrefs and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see how many visitors they get per month. Come on, come on. 181 visitors because they rank for Brighton Dental, Brighton Dental Group. So I mean, that's all they need, right? 181 visitors from Google each month. I mean, that's enough to make your business. You don't need a lot of traffic if it's the right traffic. They're ranking for the keywords that they wanna rank for. Let's change industries. Let's maybe go, um, how, how new is your website? I, so these guys have been around for since at least 2016. They could have been around for before then. This just means that something in their website changed and my SEO software is not picking up the history before then. So let's maybe go to wedding decorators, Melbourne. We've got the maps listings, then you have my website at the top then you have easy weddings so directories then you have my website again weddings of distinction let's have a look at them 
let's have a look at them and then you have my website again i don't want to sort of dissect my websites because I'm, I'm every day i'm sharing what i'm doing all right so we got weddings of distinctions let's pretend these are the competitors we need to beat these guys to to, to good looking website i think i need to zoom in i've got a 4k monitor i'm sorry uh, let's have a quick squeeze at how many pages they have. This is super, super basic stuff, like 853 pages. That's worrying me a little bit. Why would a wedding decorator have that much? Give me a sec. Um, let's, let's go to page nine. So we're gonna be looking at, uh -huh, they've got a directory that mentions wedding venues. They've got, are you telling me that each venue gets its own page? Now, once again, I'm not here to judge. Yeah, it looks like each venue has its own page. I'd probably argue that this is not the best quality page, but hey, that's if that's if that's how they wanna do it, I think they're, they're trying to build out what, so Halo Arch. Sorry, I'm lost here look book halo arch so this is this website's all over the place anyway i'm not here to judge rachel and todd so this is some sort of an update between rachel and todd. okay yep yeah, very good so a lot going on here let's have a really quick squeeze at how much traffic they are getting from uh, google goggle so it looks like they're trying to rank for a lot of different types of keywords uh, they are getting 1,475 visitors a month. So trending upwards. Anyway, I'm getting I'm getting off topic. How big, strong is their brand or website? Is it WordPress, Wix, or Weebly or Squarespace? Well, I'll tell you right now, that one was WordPress. So you, you don't need a genius. To, you just need a little cheeky Chrome extension. There it is. It's WordPress. Or you type in, what CMS is this? Okay, CMS is... I don't know what it stands for, but it stands for something. What does CMS stand? I knew what it st stood, f stood for not long ago. Content management system. I mean, I knew that. You know what I mean? It's simple, Eugene. So what CMS is this? This website will basically tell you, right, give me any website and it will tell you what CMS is this. And what you will always find, almost always, is generally speaking, 90% of the websites that that are in a competitive space will be WordPress or something other than Wix, Weebly or Squarespace. For example, a company like MYB or Xero, they use a custom CMS. They, they would have outgrown something like WordPress a long time ago. But for a small business that wants to take marketing and SEO seriously, you, you gotta be on WordPress. That's just, that's just how it is. Um, and look, I was against it. I built three or 400 Wix websites. So I was in denial for a long time until I realized my, my sites are not ranking and my clients are leaving me because, hey, I need, a, I, need, I, need, I need to get leads. I need to get traffic. I need to get noticed by Google. Wix doesn't do that. Squarespace doesn't do that. Um, I keep coming back to that, that, that topic. I'm sorry. Uh, what do we got? How new is your website? So that's quite simple needs to be more than six months old. Even then, it's up against websites that have possibly been 10, 15 years old. None of this should just ha like disencourage you. It doesn't mean that you, um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't build that site, you shouldn't tackle that keyword. It just means that you should have a clear expectation on the, the hill to climb. So just choose your battles. If I had a client that wanted to rank for injury lawyer, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't decline it, but I, I'd, I'd give a lot of warning before I said it because that's a very competitive keyword. Boxing Brighton, on the other hand, let's do it, I'm down because I've had a look at the sites, nothing special, six, seven months, we'll be at the top. Injury Lawyer, however, we might run a Google ad or a Facebook ad, but I might keep away from SEO and that's I am an SEO, so it's like, that's my job. Um, what CMS is your website? I've touched on this, it just keeps haunting me, Wix, Weebly website. So if you wanna rank, it needs to be WordPress. If you just want brand exposure and you wanna um, uh, you know, run Facebook and Google ads, Squarespace, Weebly, Wix, 
you can build beautiful sites yourself. You don't really need to pay someone that's just templates. You press one button, it just deploys it. How many high quality pages do you have? When I say high quality, some of the pages that I saw on the dentist website before, they weren't high quality. There was just three or 400 words of text. There wasn't any images. That's not high quality. Or for example, supporting content like blogs, guides, FAQs. So answering real questions. So for example, there's a cool website that I've, I've used. There's a lot of them. Uh, there's one that's called Also Asked or Answer the Public. It's a cool one. It's got this old dude's face that's about to be staring at me. I'm, I know who you are. The dude got younger. That's not the dude. There was an older dude before. So we type in um, dentist. Look at this cheeky guy. He's smiling at me. What are you doing? Dentist. Dentist. This is just going to give us suggestions on what to write content about. Here we go. Dentists. Why am I rotating my head? Can can dentists remove tonsil stones? I mean, there's so much here. So you type in any of these keywords and there will be lots of blogs. Visit those blogs. Get ideas from those blogs. And if you're a dentist or you're running running marketing campaign for a dentist, you, you, you should be able to answer these questions yourself. So for example, uh, I mean, which dentist makes money? Uh, oh my God, this is really hurting my face. Can, can dentists remove wisdom teeth? It's like, surely you can answer that question, but answer it better than everyone else. So if someone's doing three, 400 words, do like 3,000 words, be the outlier. In, in, in the SEO community, the, the answer is, you shouldn't write less or more than what everyone else is writing on the first page. I like to be the outlier. If someone's writing a thousand words, I'll just write 3000 words. I'll just go balls to the walls. It's, you know, the data shows that you should be averaging what everyone else is doing. I just go hard and then I trim it down. So that's this software. But if we keep going down, it's, you know, prepositions. What does that even mean? Like that, what a cool word. Dentist can get tooth out can't find root canal i mean this is just so it's 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 sharing with you what people search for in google based on that term it might be we might change the term and it might be are you trying to sell me stuff like it wants me to upgrade to the pro plan i don't need the pro plan. look at this guy's face so wedding planner i'm just uh, here we go. Dentist. Is there a difference between dentist and a dental surgeon? There we go. There's a cool. So this content is to please Google. It's it's not so much for a visitor to. It's not going to be on the front page. This will prove to Google that you know your stuff uh, in this space. So you're it's 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 growing trust and authority. So if we go down here, how many high quality pages do you have? So hopefully I've answered that question. Blogs, guides, FAQs. How many high quality backlinks do you have? In other words, mentions from other websites. This is actually quite difficult because if you've got a mate that's in the dentistry space or you know another friend who's in a different suburb who owns a, a dentistry website, sure, you can network with them and get a link. That link, that mention on their website to yours will actually drive a lot of what I call SEO juice. Um, it'll essentially help you rank. Um, but a lot of the stuff is networking. A lot of the stuff is buying links. So for example, there's websites out there that say, hey, I've got you know 50 websites in the medical space at a certain cost. I can mention you um, or you know, you might contact a another website also in the medical space and you might say, hey, what you know, what would it cost for you to mention us? So links are quite expensive. I spend thousands of dollars each month on acquiring quality backlinks from relevant sites. So, um, you know, for my wedding websites that I run, my wedding clients, I, I own about 800 domains that, that belong to me that I can control the, the, I guess, the link juice and the link velocity. And they're all, they're all websites that I, that I build and rank and I flip and, and sell and things like that. So, 
that's that's one way to get links. Another way is you got the directories. You've got yellow pages. You've got all the sorts of you know thousands of directory pages that are out there in the world. Just those links are not worth too much. Um, okay. W while we're on links, we were looking at were we looking at someone? Here we go. Weddings of distinction. Let's have a look at their backlinks really quickly. So they got 186 websites mentioning them almost 700 times. So that means there's several links from the same websites. So let's have a look. So these are the websites that are that are that are mentioning weddings of dis distinction. So male celebrant uh, Andrew. So if we hit click on his site, so he has some sort of a relationship weddings of distinction. So somewhere on this website, he's mentioning that other website. So he's got some sort of a you know connection with them or the wedding zone or uh, one plus celebrant or wedding venues. So vines of the Arab Valley. There you go. Um, there's that's my website, and I mention weddings of distinction. Fifteen of the best wedding stylists in Melbourne. There you go. So it's like it's my website that I've mentioned them. So they have a natural link from actually a very, very powerful website. That site gets about 20,000 visitors a month. So somewhere down here, you have, I'm just gonna Google it, Google it, weddings of, there it is. So this link is driving some serious SEO juice, in other words, helping him rank. All right, what have we, what have we got, what have we got? Your keyword is too competitive. So it's, your website is not optimized from Google Crawler. So what that means is, there are 300, 3,000, 5,000 competitors. They all have websites, whether it's a wedding photographer, whether it's a dentist. I'm talking about dentists and photographers a lot, aren't I? Let's change topics. We're talking about cardiologists. So there's a lot of websites for cardiologists. If there are not, when, when Google visit your website, they're looking for certain things. They have an algorithm that makes judgments. It's a computer, essentially. That computer can be very, very dumb, and it can be very, very smart. And so you need to feed it the right information. You need to be very, very clear to that to that algorithm, to Google, who you are, what you do, and where you are. And sometimes that means literally writing cardiologists in Melbourne, you know, we serve 20,000 clients in our history. You know, we're the best cardiologists in Melbourne. So, so you're, you're sort of repeating those terms over and over to really, really make it clear. So then when Google looks at your website compared to the 3000 others, well, which one is, is, is showing more signs of being a true cardiologist to an extent, things that happen on the page and the keywords and the titles and the images, they matter. And then come the links. So if you don't show up in Google, maybe you're targeting the wrong keywords. Maybe your competitive your, your keywords are too competitive and you will never rank. And I was I was chatting about that before. Maybe you need to change the keyword. Instead of being a wedding a photographer in Melbourne, you should be a photographer of Brighton. Or you should be a portrait photographer Brighton. That's even more niche. So instead of being portrait photographer Melbourne, you're portrait photographer Brighton, Elwood. And so you're sort of big chunk of small pie sort of yeah got that right that struggled let me have a sip this is big search intent like sounds complex it's actually not so if you want to sell i'm going to go back to leather sofas again if you want to sell leather sofas let's do it leather sofa okay maps maps Maps, great, means we can show up on maps. It's showing me someone that's, I'm in Aspendale, so it's sort of like the best results within a certain area. 37 Google reviews, 105 Google, 188. What have we got? Let's have a look at these guys. Let's have a look at these guys. Freedom. I mean, so far, just, that's a hard keyword to rank for. This looks like an e-commerce website. Yes, it is. So if I press that, there's probably a button that says, take my cash, take all my money, give me this. That, those sofas look pretty cool, huh? Let me just zoom in so that it feels like sofas are closer to me. But they're not. This is funky. Anyway, what's the next one? Another e-commerce. So in other words, if you build a page that doesn't look like this, that doesn't have all of these options, you're probably not gonna rank for these keywords. So what's the intent behind this keyword? The intent behind this keyword 
is Google will serve us websites that are selling sofas online. Um, another one. Notice they all look more or less the same. So that's what, 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 what Google is showing at the top. Um, means we need to build something like it as well. Um, you know, we, we're, if, if these are all e-commerce, well, guess what? You're going to have to go to e-commerce as well. Uh, what else we got? So ways we can get traffic. Search engine optimization is the op obvious one where we, we're constantly doing things to your website, adding blogs, adding links, all that kind of stuff. Happens every day, happens every week. There's, it, it's, it's a never ending. In fact, here's the, here's the graph of all the things that go into an SEO campaign. So every single month, we're doing things off the page. So in the background, in other words, acquiring backlinks, acquiring mentions of your website on other websites. We're doing on-page work. On-page work is things like blogs, things like new pages, adjusting the text a little bit, adjusting the keywords. Google My Business is your Google listing, uploading images, optimizing it in a, in a specific way. Then we do reporting, and then we manage pay per click. So each of those things has, has a, a whole bunch of things that you can do. So the off-page work is we build backlinks from directories, niche edits. A niche edit is where, where, where I'm a wedding DJ. I've just found another awesome page ranking at the top, for example. It's how to become a wedding DJ or how to choose a wedding DJ. So it's a blog. It's not another competitor. And I contact them and say, hey, what are the chances you can mention us on your blog? Maybe I can send you some, some cash or I can send you some text. I can add value to that blog. So that's called a niche edit where someone injects a mention of your website on their piece of content. Then you have guest posts. Guest posts is where I contact other websites and says, hey, I've got a really, really cool piece of content. It's a thousand words, it's 2000 words. I think it would suit your website. But as, a, as credit, just mention us. Bang, there's another way to get mentions from other websites, links. I, I'm gonna be here all day if I, if I explain some of these things, but this is what goes into an SEO campaign to climb the ranks. I'm not here to sort of talk about this. I'm talking, I, I, I guess we're, we're, we're still on the same topic as why your website doesn't rank. I guess I'm explaining all the things that go into a campaign to make your website show up. Um, local SEO. So a good example here is local SEO is showing up in your local suburb, showing up on Google Maps. For example, I look after quite a few accounting practices as well, and I'll do this thing where local SEO is proving to Google that you are the best answer for that suburb. So if you're an accountant in Malvern, Caulfield, Brighton, Oakley, when Google visits your website, you need to have content on your website that proves to them that you are where you are. Just having your address and your Google listing means you're the same as everybody else. But some of the cheeky stuff that I do is I'll put a I'll put a list of local cafes to take a client for a meeting if you're an accountant or if you're a wealth advisor, I'll do the same thing. Or like for wedding websites, I'll be like top 50 parks or, or, or locations in Melbourne to take uh, wedding photographs. So it's like, bang, I, I get an excuse to put a page on my website that mentions um, addresses. It mentions St. Kilda, you know, it mentions Brighton boxes, Brighton beach houses, for example. So when Google visits your website, they're, they're seeing all this, all this content about local areas. So you... You, you must know this, this stuff pretty well if you're writing about it. So here's where Google is smart and Google is also quite dumb. Running Google ads is another way to get traffic where we're picking a certain keyword. We might say, if, if I go back to this one here, what's going on? Where are we? Wedding venue Melbourne from $1 to $4. We're saying, hey, Anyone that types in that keyword, we want to own that space. We want to intercept them. We want to grab them. We want to show them to our show, you know, show our website. So what what else we got? We got you know wedding DJ. Wedding DJ. How is wedding DJ more than wedding venue? 
this is so during COVID, these this stuff is actually I don't think it's right. Google see what I mean? Google is lying. I know that wedding venue keywords are around thirteen dollars. Or for example, accountant accountant Melbourne is not eleven. It's not. It's about twenty three. Maybe my ad is not good. Maybe. No, but seriously, they're lying. It's a lie. These people are lying. Anyway, uh, I hope that makes sense. So that's Google Ads, where we're, where we're bidding on certain keywords and we're saying, hey, we want to own that space, visit my website. So it's a rental strategy, but you get instant results, generally. When I say results, it's instant traffic. What that traffic does when they visit your website is another thing. So if I pay for a wedding venue Melbourne, they visit my website and I'm showing them cats and dogs, well, there's not going to be an inquiry there for the cats and dogs. So what you're showing them needs to be relevant to what they're looking for. Show them other couples that got married, show them reviews, show them your service, show them your menu, show them a couple of videos. That'll heighten your chances of getting a conversion. Then you have Facebook ads. Now Facebook ads is, is can be quite tricky. And I mentioned this before. Um, I'm not going to, let me just pause for a second and I'll um, show you. Okay, I think I'm back. If this is good, I hope hopefully this continues. So what I'm looking at here, I'm, look, I'm looking at Facebook and I'm looking at the targeting. So what I've done, I've just selected 18 year olds to 65 and I've, select, and, and I've selected uh, Brighton to 10 mile radius. Let's have some fun here. So let's target maybe women. And then let's say uh, engaged, relationship status engaged, when it decides to load. Here we go. Relationship status engaged, we select that. 10 mile radius, women engaged, we get an audience of 12,000 people. Now, obviously Facebook targeting can get, a, and actually really, really needs to be a bit more serious than just that. But straight away, that's an audience of 12,000 people that probably at about 200 bucks, I can hit all of their phones, all of their Instagram accounts and say, hey, get married here, get married at Brighton Savoy, you know, amazing wedding venue, right? Or you need this wedding photographer, here's some of the snaps that he's done. And there's just, it, from there, it's just a numbers game. I might reduce that audience to, you know, 30, maybe 35, 35 to 50, 50 or 35 to 40, for example. So if we go 35 to 40, we can be specific with the kind of ad we will show them. Now we're down to 2,000 people. So if we know that people over their over 50s, for example, like a certain style, so 50 to 60, engage, I'm actually interested how many there are. There are less than 1,000 people aged 50 to 60 that are relationships that are engaged. Well, that makes sense. Maybe they like Elvis Presley. So we might we might find them a wedding singer that sings like that and is relevant to them. So when they're scrolling, they'll be like, oh, I haven't booked a wedding singer or wedding MC. This guy seems relevant. So that's where Facebook ads is super, super good. For things, for other categories, it might be difficult. If there's not a category in place, like for example, if we want to sell things to you know parents, there is a category for parent. Not just parent, parents for 18 to 26 year olds, 13 to 17 year olds, it keeps going, new parent. If you wanna sell baby products, zero to 12 months, there you go. I've just designed a special new parent in their 50s. Interesting, less than a thousand people, of course there would be. So let's go to, you know, 25 to, you know, 40 women, there's 4,600 women 10 mile radius around Brighton that have a under 12 month old. There you go. There's a target audience. You, that's, you could, you know, 200 bucks, you can show up whatever you want in front of the, as long as Facebook approves it. Once again, Facebook will do that thing where just like Google, if it notices that people are having a bad experience on that ad, it A, won't show it, and B, it'll just spike up the price to a point where you're like, this is not, this is not profitable. Um, so that's another way to, to it's another way to show up. Retargeting pixel is when I've explained it, you're following them around. So I think I've shared directory mentions. So if we type in, let's say, wedding DJ 
two words. There's my directory and there's my directory again. So it's like, for example, just contact me and I'll list you. If you're a wedding DJ and you've got a website, I'll list you, happy to do that. But you know, you might contact Melbourne Entertainment Co, Nathan, and say, hey, Nate, this guy, pretty boy, good looking guy. So mention me, you know, maybe he will, maybe he won't, but it's it's worth, worth, a, worth a try, right? Well, for example, you know, Hens Ideas Melbourne. So Time Out, for example, or my website, or there's me again. So we might contact Time Out and say, hey, you know, next time you do one of these posts, what do I need to do to be mentioned here? We, we do Hens Ideas as well. We do, we do, you know, we, we, we go shooting or something like that, or horseback riding is what we have here. How do I get mentioned? So just network, really basic stuff. A lot of the time, the guy behind this website is, is, is cool enough to mention you, or they might say, hey, here's our packages. This is gonna cost you 50 bucks. But 50 bucks, you, you're gonna be A, mentioned, and B, you're gonna get a link to your website. That's amazing. Um, anyway, I think this, this, this video has gone for way longer, 40 minutes. Jesus Christ, this is gonna be long. But hopefully, anyone that's stuck around all the way through has received value, even if you got halfway through it. Um, hit me up, show me your site. Show me your competitors. I'll um, I'll tell you what to do. Um, you know, we'll draw up a plan and um, we can we can kick goals together. Thank you.